Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So good to see all of you gathered here this morning, and a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping online with us and at home on Facebook Live and Zoom or watching later. We're glad you're joining with us too. Several announcements for this morning. Uh, today we will be taking down the greens after the worship service. So uh, we could use all hands on deck for doing that. It's, um, it was actually very serendipitous, providential that they remained up. We had a service here on Friday, uh, a funeral service for Carrie Lee Beams, who absolutely loved Christmas. So it was nice to have all the Christmas decorations up as we celebrated her life. The end of year reports are due tomorrow, January 17th. So if, if you're a committee chairperson or liaison, please make sure that Mariah has those reports tomorrow so she can begin to compile the report for the congregational meeting that we will have on the last Sunday in January. And then uh, Meals on Wheels, they called and said they desperately need some drivers, specifically on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And she said, if we don't get some drivers, some people just aren't going to get their meals. And so we don't want some folks to go hungry who are homebound. So if you have time or ever thought about being a volunteer driver for Meals on Wheels, they meet here at the church on the weekdays, and then they deliver the meals out to community members, and they could really use some drivers. Um, there's a contact number up there, too. If you need that number, we can get it to you from the office as well. The um, other thing is uh, we are forming committees uh, for the new year. So establishing committee chairs, secretaries, treasurers. If you are interested in serving on any of our committees, all the committees are open. You don't have to be a member of the church to serve on a committee. You do to be an elder or a deacon, but anyone can serve on any committee or commission. So if you have a passion for mission and social justice, you can join the mission committee. If you have a gift for teaching and arts and crafts, you can join the Christian education committee. If you have a passion for worship and you have some ideas about how to, how to do worship and, and things you want to see in worship, you can join the worship committee. They are all open. And so you can see uh, in the um, website, on the website, who chairs each committee uh, or call the office and say, yeah, I want to I wanna serve on one of these committees or just leave a note on one of the prayer cards. We would love to have you. Uh, serve on any of the committees that we do. And then finally, we need some folks to sign up for the youth group press on meals. We do those meals on Wednesdays at our house. We have the kids over there and, uh, and uh, Kelly Allen comes and uh, the, it's, it's always a good time. Last week we had pizza. It, so it's easy peasy. Um, and we would love for folks to sign up to do that. I believe that's all of the announcements that I have. Leo. You're, you're saying, look, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, next week, we are starting a six-week sermon series to get us from here to Lent, and it's going to be a sermon series on resilience. Uh, it's based on the book by Tracy Maramuska, who is a uh, Presbyterian minister uh, and a uh, Coast Guard. She was a Coast Guard officer and is now a chaplain and writer and speaker. And she wrote the book, Weathering the Storm, Simple Strategies for Being Prepared um, and Peaceful. And so some of the excerpts from the sermon series are going to be based on her, on her chapters from that book, and then some Bible stories about characters who um, became resilient. And I think you're going to find it interesting that resilience isn't about just pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and getting on with life. It's actually what she says is getting in touch with the things that keep you from being resilient and naming those. So it's not, it's not a kind of suck it up buttercup. It's a, this hurts. And how do I turn this into a strength when I can't do it and, and finding those things to do it. It's a little bit different idea of resilience there. I think you'll, you'll find uh, you'll get a lot out of it uh, for your personal lives and for community lives, um, especially as we 
continue to need to be resilient. So that's it. I hope you will enjoy that sermon series and say a prayer for it, if you would. Say a prayer for me as I um, work through that and, and work out the weeks for, for all of us. All right. Are there any other announcements? Let us center our hearts and minds to worship God. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. The Lord is with you. We are one body, yet we have many members. We are gathered today as the body of Christ. Let us worship with the Spirit who unites us all. The opening hymn is number 301.
Please be seated. God has given us the ability to lead with love. God has promised to forgive us when we fail to do this. God extends loving and healing mercy to us always, even before we ask for it. Knowing and trusting this steadfast love that is ours in Jesus Christ, let us now confess our sins and offenses before God and each other. God of all life, in your wisdom, you knit together the people of God as the body of Christ. You called us together to be the church so that we might be a strength for each other. You created an intentional community so others may see the way of Christ at work and seek to follow his way and join his body. Yet we deem some as unworthy who are part of the body of Christ. At times we see ourselves as unworthy. We cut off ourselves and others from the body. We may say, I am too tired. I am too old. I have nothing to offer. We may feel others are unworthy. It is at these times when we and others need the body most. Christ, forgive us when we abuse your body. Let us continue to pray in silence. The psalmist reminds us that God wants to gather us in like a mother hen gathers her brood under her wings. Under the wings of God's love, we can let go of sin and guilt. We can abide in the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. Friends, in Christ, we are forgiven and loved. Thanks be to God for this good news. Gracious God, may your Holy Spirit wash over with a spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened, we may know the hope to which Christ has called us, and have the strength of mind to always follow the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians. 12, 4 through 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of gifts, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, all these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all are members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Powerful, thank you. I, I know some um, some old old Presbyterians who might be rolling over in their graves that we've been clapping in church, <laughs> but we do, we don't clap because we're entertained. We clap because we're moved and we're giving thanks to God for the gifts that people have shared. So thank you for using your gifts to move us in worship. Our second lesson for today comes from Exodus chapter 18. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came into the wilderness where Moses was encamped at the mountain of God, bringing Moses' sons and wife to him. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons, and Moses went out to meet his father-in-law. He bowed down and kissed him. And then each asked after the other's welfare. And then they went into the tent. The next day, Moses sat as judge for the people, while the people stood around him from morning till evening. 
when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you're doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people stand around you from morning to evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another, and I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you're doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you, for the task is too heavy. You cannot do it alone. You should also look for others who are able amongst the people, people who fear God or trust, trustworthy and hate dishonest gain. Set such people over them as officers, over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you, but decide every minor case themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy God, we so often try to do things from our own strength, from our own self-determination and drive. Help us to empty ourselves, to rely on your spirit of peace, grace, and wisdom. Help us to lean on others who have been given gifts. We ask for us to be humbled and yet still called to be willing to serve, relying on your strength and the strength of others, not just our own. In Christ's name, amen. Some years ago, Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of the best-selling book, Eat, Pray, Love, was stuck on a crosstown bus in New York City during rush hour. Traffic was barely moving, and the bus was filled with cold, tired people who were deeply irritated with one another, with themselves, or just the world. Two men barked at each other about a shove that might have happened, that might have been intentional, intentional, may not have been intentional. A pregnant woman got on the bus, and nobody moved. Rage was in the air. And no mercy could be found here. But as the bus approached 7th Avenue, the driver got on the intercom and he said, folks, I know it's a rough day. And many of you are tired and frustrated. I can't do anything about the weather or the traffic. But here's what I can do. As each of you gets off the bus, I will reach out my hand to you. As you walk by, drop your troubles into the palm of my hand. You don't need to carry those things home to your families or your friends or for the rest of your night. Just leave them with me. My route goes right by the Hudson River. And I, when I drive by them later, when I drive by there later, I will open up the window and I will throw all of your troubles into the water. It was as if a spell had been cast over the bus. Everyone started laughing and faces gleamed with surprised delight. And people who had been pretending for the past hour not to notice other people on the bus started making faces at each other and winking and smiling. And all of the commuters were lightened. They were like, is this guy really serious? And when he came to the next stop, they found out, oh, yes, he was serious. Before the first passenger could get off the bus, he stuck his arm out, turned his palm over. And as each passenger passed by, they placed their troubles in his hand. Some just pretended like they were dropping something. Some gave them a high five. Some laughed. Some cried. But they did it just as promised. 
And at the next stop, he did it again. And he repeated this through every stop all the way to the river where he threw all those troubles into the water. We live in a hard world. Sometimes it's extra difficult to be human. Sometimes we have a bad day. Sometimes we have a bad day that turns into a bad week, that turns into a bad month, that turns into a bad year, that turns into two years of a pandemic. We struggle. We fail. We lose money. We lose jobs. We lose friends. We lose faith. We lose love. We lose loved ones. Sometimes we witness horrible events in person, in our personal lives. Sometimes we watch too many horrible, horrible events on the news. There are times when everything just seems a little cloaked in darkness, like there's just this heaviness and uncertainty about everything. We long for the light, but sometimes we don't know where to find it. But what if you are the light? What if you are the very agent of illumination that a dark situation begs for? That's what that bus driver taught Gilbert that day, that anyone, anyone can be the light. This guy wasn't some big power player. He wasn't a spiritual guru. He wasn't some media savvy influencer. He was a bus driver, one of society's most invisible workers, but he possessed a real power, a power within himself to empty himself and be the light and share the burden with others. When life feels grim, or when we feel particularly powerless in the face of the world's troubles, think of that man, just a bus driver, and ask, what can I do right now to be the light? Now, I know we can't personally end all wars or solve global warming or transform some difficult people into entirely different creatures. Sarah has tried. We definitely can't control traffic, but we do have some influence on everyone we brush up against, even if we don't speak, even if we don't know their names. The light the light of Christ shines through the eyes and you have the power to lift the burdens of others with that light. I think one person at a time, one interaction at a time, multiplying is the way that we change the world. One bright act of grace is how we carry each other's burdens all the way to the river where we throw the troubles in the water. In our Old Testament lesson today, after having crossed through the waters of the Red Sea, Jethro, the father of Moses, comes out to the wilderness to bring Moses' wife, Jethro's daughter, and his children out to be with Moses at the mountain of God. He spends some time watching Moses. I love that line in the scripture where it says he came to the wilderness and Moses kneeled down and he kissed him. And then they asked after each other's welfare, right? Isn't that just, isn't that what we do? How are things, right? And I just got this image of that. In the next day, the father-in-law watched Moses work as he served all the people. And after he saw Moses and all the work that he was doing for the people, while everyone else just stood around, Jethro gave him some wisdom about delegating. He says, Moses, you can't do it all alone. You will burn out. And simultaneously, you're going to drive everybody nuts. God doesn't plan for us to do it alone, to be the light alone, to share our burdens alone, or to carry our burdens alone. We can't do it all. 
our epistle lesson for today says God gave varying gifts to all kinds of different people. And these gifts, said, the scripture says, were filled with the building up of the common good. These gifts weren't for us to put videos on TikTok or to brag how talented we are about something. They were for building up the common good. Whether it's leading a nation like Moses or getting through the day on a bus, we need others. We need the bus drivers and the snow plow drivers. We need the salt mine workers and the doctors and the teachers. We need people to comfort. We need people to allow themselves to be comforted. We need people who do budgets and people who preach. We need people to lead and people to follow. We need people to serve and people to allow themselves to be served. Different gifts, one body. We have one purpose, and that purpose is to share God's light. And our goal is to get people to follow the way of Jesus, sharing that light. We can't do it alone. May you, the people of God, let the light of Christ shine through you. And may we take our troubles to the waters of baptism where they can remain and be washed away. In Christ's name, amen.
seated. Will the elders and deacons to be ordained and installed please come forward and face the congregation? Hear these words of Scripture. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To it, each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Within the community of church, some are called to particular service as deacons and ruling elders. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Mr. Stated Clerk. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the First Presbyterian Church now presents for the office of deacon Tim Olson, Chris Vandenberg, Grace Vandenberg, to the office of ruling elder, Linda Albright, Janet Cermak, Heidi Ryan, all of whom you, by the work of the Holy Spirit, have chosen. Thank you. Before we do the examination of the elders and deacons, I, I'd like to read you an excerpt of Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail. I was told to read this letter each year because it was written to me, to my church, to you, to our church. And it still speaks to this day. I would encourage you to read the whole letter tomorrow as we celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Just an excerpt. He writes, there was a time when the church was very powerful. It was during that period that the early Christians rejoiced when they were deemed worthy to suffer for what they believed. In those days, the church was not merely a thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of popular opinion. It was the thermostat that transformed the mores of society. Things are different now. The contemporary church is often a weak, ineffectual voice with an uncertain sound. It is so often the arch supporter of the status quo, far from being disturbed by the presence of the church, the power structure of the average community is consoled by the church's often vocal sanction of things as they are. But the judgment of God is upon the church as never before. If the church of today does not recapture the sacrificial spirit of the early church, it will lose its authentic ring, forfeit the loyalty of millions, and be dismissed as an irrelevant social club with no meaning for this century. I meet young people every day whose disappointment with the church has risen to outright disgust. I hope the church as a whole will meet the challenge of this decisive hour. May we hear this call to recapture the sacrificial spirit of the early church. We can't do it alone. We will now examine these candidates for their service, asking them the questions from the Book of Order on ordination. Elders and deacons elect, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If you do, say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ? If you do, say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in our confessions of our church? 
as an expression of what scripture leads us to believe and to do. If you do, say, I do. And will your ministry follow in obedience to Jesus Christ and be confided, be guided by the gift of the Holy Spirit? If it will, say, it will. For the ruling elders, will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, our mission, and service? If you will, say, I will. I will. will you try to show the love and grace of Jesus Christ to all? If you will, say, I will. I will. To the deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity? urging concern and compassion and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. In your ministry, will you show the love and grace of Jesus Christ? If you will, say, I will. And do we, the members of the church gathered here and there, accept these members as ruling elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Christ. If you do, say, I do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us serving Christ? If we do, say, I do. Wonderful. And last question to the elders and the deacons. My favorite question. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with your energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. If you will, say, I will. Wonderful. Those to be ordained, if you would, all of you turn and face me. And those to be ordained, you may kneel. And I would ask, because of COVID, um, instead of having everyone come lay on hands, those who are current active elders or deacons, if just you would come up, and lay on hands, and then the rest of you, the spirit works wirelessly, right? So uh, throw your hands in the air like that, and through the power of the spirit, put your, put your hands on, on these uh, elders and deacons to be ordained. So far, um, active elders and deacons would come forward, and Sarah, um, and y'all can go ahead and kneel as they come forward. Let us pray. Loving God of grace, you call us to a common ministry as ambassadors of Christ. We give you thanks that by your grace, you have called these your servants to lead and care for people as your deacons and ruling elders. Through your gift of your spirit, and now these laying on of hands. Lay your hands. Grant that their hearts may be set on fire with love for you. Grant that their lives may share the light of Christ to all they encounter and that they may lead your church. Give us courage to follow where your servants lead us, following you, that together we may declare your wonderful deeds and show your love to the world. May your spirit be upon them and work through them. In Christ's name, amen. You are now ordained and installed as elders and deacons in the church of Jesus Christ. You may stand. Oh, yes. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, showing forth his way. And now, with the whole church, let us confess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed in the question and answer format. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your first act as ruling elders and deacons will be to witness a baptism. So I would ask that you remain up here. You can face the congregation uh, to witness. Uh, do like it's a wedding, you know, the 45 degree angle type thing. And, and, and we're, we're going to offer these kids to the bride of Christ. And listen, if they start running, uh, help. Help. Will the, fam will the Kalupa family please come forward for the baptism of Noah and Emmett? I should have had that picture tossed up there. On behalf of the session, I present Noah and Emmett Kalupa, sons of Stephanie and Nathan Kalupa, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Welcome, Emmett and Noah. I know you've been waiting a long time for this. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Jesus Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Stephanie and Nathan. Do you desire to have Noah and Emmett baptized? And do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ and as members of First Presbyterian Church of Mount Pleasant and as friends gathered here, do you promise to guide and nurture Noah and Emmett by word and deed with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ? If you do, say we do. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. As God embraces you within the covenant, I ask, that you, I ask you to reject sin, to profess, profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church the faith in which we baptize. Nathan and Stephanie, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? We do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Yes. 
thanksgiving over the water. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Send your spirit, O Lord, to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise him to new life, and graft him into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, that he might have power to do your will, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You can go first, Noah. Do you remember playing in the water? Yeah. You want to say, look, no, I'm going to pour some water on your head. It's it's really warm water. Do you want to feel it? You can stick your hand in there. Just play in the waters of life. Noah Dean, I baptize you in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. And may you always remember how much God loves you. Amen. Emmett? Yeah. (laughs) Emmett. (laughs) I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may you always remember that God loves you. Amen. Friends, Noah and Emmett, baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us join together in a prayer. O Lord, uphold Noah and Emmett by your spirit, by your Holy Spirit. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. God, we also lift up prayers of the people today. We pray for our country, for our nation and our community. We pray for those struggling, for those who may be lonely or looking for their way. And we pray that through this baptism, and the remembrance of our own baptisms, that we are reminded that we are called and claimed by you in everything we do. Now hear us as we pray together, as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 We're all done.
Can you turn me on? There we go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, friends, go from this place and, and share the light of God, and, but don't do it alone. Shine your light for others. Let others shine their light for you. Carry each other because we can't do it alone. And I would invite you, if you would like, uh, to come forward after the service. Uh, you can come and play in the waters of life and renew your own baptism, uh, committing to follow the way of Christ the best you can, dying to yourself and rising through the waters of new life. And you can even take one of the, the little glass marble beads there as, as a, remember, a reminder of that commitment. Go from this place, being renewed through the Holy Spirit. Find yourself thriving in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who throws our troubles into the waters so that we may rise again, new and made whole. May you find God, your creator, giving you signs of light and love in all creation and through all people. In Christ's name, amen.